Greetings, everyone! And I welcome you all back to even more of my adventures in Valkyria Chronicles. Surprisingly enough, I got an extra opportunity to do a bit of recording and now that I have this little uh, free time, I can put it this way, I will gladly take this opportunity and record even more Valkyria Chronicles since I am really enjoying this series thus far and if you have a chance, why not so? And hopefully you guys will enjoy the story as much as I do. And you know, we're just hitting like what? The chapter three? Yeah, chapter three. And we are already hitting a fan with it. But, like, you know, from the outlines, what I can see, this entire chapter will be pretty much quite a lot of uh, cutscenes and the mission, like... Uh, ah, right, I cannot move anywhere, because nothing is unlocked in here. But yeah, last time I have tasted my first defeat and that was kind of part of what actually inspired me to push forward. I want to challenge this game now to see how much challenge to my brain and my tactical thinking it can provide. But without any other ado, let's not waste any more time since I don't have it too much of it. But yes, I would love to start this episode now. In March of 1935, the Empire began its invasion across Gallia's eastern border. So, ah, Maximilian, I have to press commander the... of the Gallian invasion front, built his army around mobile armor. Girlendio and the other fortresses along the border fell to his tanks in quick succession. Bruel's fall in under two hours was typical of villages in the Empire's path, and the road to the capital bore a steady flow of refugees. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was going automatically, but I have to press the button to progress this one. Randgris, Gallia's capital, a town secure and stable since ancient times. Within its walls stood the castle Randgris, and within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess. Supporting Gallia's policy of neutrality was a system of universal conscription. Okay, this is, ah, Under no, it, all schools idea. required military training each year. In the event of a war, Citizens were then drafted into the militia to defend their country. Okay, As the conflict anything. with the East grew worse, both Welkin and Alicia found themselves no exceptions to that fate. So now the news reached the capital of Gallia. Okay. So these are my new digs. Okay, so they moved s straight to the capital then. About the news and stuff like that, I would assume. Oh, my uniform. I should get changed before reporting in. Better get ready now. Yes, sir, guys, my throat. Flares, binoculars, a compass, and a map. 
I gotta say, you actually look really good uh, in it. Everything you need for a nice hike. Or combat. Welkin? Can I come in? Sure, it's open. Oh, you're already changed too. Let's see. Oh, wow. That looks also really nice on you. Well, I would imagine the... Uh, thing you, I, I, you just skipped my word. The thing on your head is yeah, like your defining feature. Not bad, not bad. You look good, actually. So, how about me? Do I look all right in this? Convincing? You look sure right, Alicia. Don't worry about that. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, you look fine. You wear it like a pro. Really? You're not just saying that? Of course not. You look tough. I like it. Oh, good. I was worried it looked kind of silly. No way! That plating on the back? It's like a coleopterid exoskeleton. Beetle-tastic! Okay. Coleo what? And did you just say beetle? Uh, Welkin? What kind of girl wants to hear that she looks like a bug? Now that I think about it, I don't know any girl who would be really glad to hear that myself. Huh? Not just any bug, a rhinoceros beetle, king of the insects. Who wouldn't want that? Uh-huh. I guess I'll just try to take that as a very Welkin sort of compliment. Tell me about that scarf. You've been wearing it since I met you. Oh, this? It's part of my uniform from the bakery. Is that right? I don't want to forget the time I spent busting my buns baking. I plan to keep wearing it until I can get back to manning the ovens again. That's great. Once you do, I'll be first in line to get some of that bread. Is that a promise? Well, I'll be sure to have plenty of it ready and waiting for you. Absolutely. Hey, if you're ready, we should probably go see the captain now. Okay, about to meet new faces. Ooh, okay, that was like a little com comedic relief, but... Now let's get all serious and all business-like. I'm mentally prepared for it now. Come in. Excuse me, ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee Welkin Gunther, reporting for duty. Ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee Alicia Melchiot, also reporting for duty. I'm Captain Eleanor Varat, commander of this regiment. Gunther, you're promoted to lieutenant. You'll be leader of Squad 7 now. Ma'am! Enlistee Melchiot, you're promoted to sergeant. You'll be under the lieutenant's command. Understood? Ma'am! What do you know? It is you. Nice coincidence, huh, Welkin? Valdio? I had no idea that you'd enlisted. Yep. Now that there's a real war going on, I joined up. Pretty much all the officer and training boys are here just like you. You know each other? Yes, ma'am. We knew each other at university. Welkin was in science and I was in archaeology. And just look at us now. No archaeology or science. Looks like the two of us are studying more, I guess. Looks that way. It's good to see you. And you. That'll be all for now. There's a strategy briefing later today. But you still have time. Time for you to catch up. You'll be spending a lot of time on the post and in Randgreaves. They'll be your new home, so get to know them. That'll be all. Report back in time for the briefing. Until then, you're dismissed. Oh! 
I see. Interesting. Now, that's a completely new part, if I can put it this way, so... Mm. Equipment... Okay. Okay, so that's what's Welcome to R&D, man. What can I do you for? Huh? Wait, I know that insignia. You're Lieutenant Gunther, aren't you? I knew it! Man, I've heard about you. That evacuation at Brule was just... Wow! Nice to meet you too, Leon. Protecting a tiny life in the middle of all that slaughter? Man! Man! Oh, Lieutenant, you're good people. You get all my respect and then some, bro. I guess. Thanks. What's going on, Leon? I could hear you from clear across the hangar. Oh, Casey, check it out! It's Lieutenant Gunther! He's the man, man! <laughs> Sorry about him, Lieutenant. He's like this all the time, I'm afraid. Well, as long as he's doing his job properly, I'm not complaining. But where are my manners? I'm Chris Cherney. I'm training here as a mechanic. Oh, oh, and I'm Leon Schmidt. But just call me Leon, bro. I'm your boy. I'll take your word on it. So, Lieutenant Gunther, what brings you down to R&D today? We do work here on weapons development, making upgraded weapons and equipment. And that includes rifles and machine guns. We can even soup up your tank. Uh -huh. So, all kinds of upgrades. Of course. Research expenses aren't cheap. With rifles and other firearms, we'll mass-produce new models as they're developed. You won't have to worry about making enough for your squad. We'll outfit them. For tanks, you can upgrade the baseline performance of the body itself or develop optional parts that you can add on to tweak out its specs. Mm -hmm. Right. You can choose which optional parts you want in the tank equipment section. Come in any time and make adjustments based on the needs of the operation at hand. Okay, about our fit in the tanks. Development work on tanks happens in the form of body enhancements, tread and weak point improvements, and attack support. Body armor is mostly reinforced the gun barrel and body armor to improve its base stats. Be given the best body type you have developed, okay. You decide whether to favor attack or defense and altering body types give you, uh, gives your tank different outward appearance. Improvements on thread and weak points and attack support take the form of parts that can be added to, that to enhance their abilities. Each part a set size of blocks. Okay. Pick the optional parts that best fit your own personal combat style. Alright everyone. Now that we got some experience and some money taken from our previous operations, let's see what's, what's at stake. So, develop weapons. I 
see, I see. Wow, that's a lot of upgrades. Spare thread. Hardened blade. I see. Well, sorry guys if it's gonna take me a bit, but I definitely need to get familiar uh, with what's at stake. So right now we have... Rifles. Okay, so this that's the basic rifle. Okay. Okay, that's machine boots. Machine gun, okay. That's what I should be looking into. Like, I don't want to rely heavily on the tank alone. I want to make sure that my soldiers can uh, actually do their own part in removing the tank threat. Sniper rifles and grenades. Mm -hmm. So, not much of the uniform. Okay, we got 5,500. So, first things first. I need to make absolutely sure that I am properly equipped to take out uh, heavy uh, artillery and tanks. Here you go, bro! All done! That was fast. I thought it was gonna like take a while, like a mission or two or so, uh, around those lines, but that works for me. And I definitely need to uh, in invest into the sniper rifle. That's for absolutely sure. All set! Grenades, nothing I can do here, really. Okay, I still can afford general. Hmm. Armor upgrade. Tank is really expensive, so I should keep that in mind too. But what I really need is to make sure, uh, like, I'll try to make uh, a balanced tank, like not going uh, into the extremes of either defense or offense, 
but uh, what I should concentrate on first is to make sure that So I can make up to 12 upgrades. <laughs> I think that should be enough for now. Well, sir, was we're working here around the clock to make possible tomorrow what's out of reach today. Come again a little later. We'll do our best to have something useful for you by then. Yeah, I don't want to waste my money all at once. Yeah, you better come back soon, bro. I am all fired up to work on stuff for you. I'll sure I will. Mm-hmm. 